The Outskirts of Faith podcast is brought to you by Monkey Nut Audiobooks. Creating audiobooks, podcasts and voiceovers that keep people listening. The Outskirts of Faith Hello and welcome to this Outskirts of Faith special. My name's Elliot and I'm very, very excited to be joined here today by Tom Wright. Some of you may know him as N.T. Wright. Is that, uh, Tom, is that a, co- a confusion that people have? <laughs> it, it is a confusion. Um, this goes back a long way. The first son in my family for the last five or six generations has been called Nicholas with another name. And um, my father was Nicholas Irwin. His father was Nicholas Irwin. So when I was born, uh, I got Nicholas but then Thomas was my other grandfather, so Nicholas Thomas. But because there were too many Nicholas Wrights around already, I've always had Tom. Um, So then when I was starting to publish things, the publishers said, uh, N.T. Wright looks far too formal. At least the British ones did. The American ones, for some reason, like the two initials. And sometimes Americans think that um, I should be addressed as N.T. They say, hey, N.T. And I say, well, actually, feel free to call me Tom. But, um, <laughs> but this has been confusing. And sometimes people have wondered, um, people in all genuine sincerity have wondered whether there are two different people, two different authors. But I'm afraid it's all me. <laughs> <laughs> because we get it as well. I mean, we yep. had it with your recent book, Into the Heart of Romans, oh, yeah. uh, which we've recorded. we've recorded many of your books. Right. And I have had to always ask the question. I'm like, well, in the in the mm-hmm. credits, which it, is it? You know, which one is it? Because <laughs> we get your full name, we get uh, right. So, so, so in England, the the books that are Tom Wright tend to be the more popular ones, mm-hmm. and the N.T. Wright ones are the more formal academic ones. So, I have to say, um, we've, you've got so many fabulous books out there, and uh, I don't think you can go to a church without finding your books in there. Um, However, you, you've written a children's Bible, My Big Story Bible. We're very excited to record it. I just want to talk about that for a minute. So um, is this the first children's Bible you've written? Oh, yes. I never thought of doing that because I, I've never actually taught, apart from teaching Sunday school occasionally, but I've never actually taught anyone below the age of about 18. Um, so the thought of addressing children. But then the publishers said, well, hey, you've got grandchildren. You tell them stories. You read books to them. So just go into that mode. And so... That's what I've tried to do. Well, it's going to be fantastic. Now, thank you for doing this special. I won't keep you too sure, long. Sure. Um, had a long day. Um, there is something which I think our listeners would really value, really appreciate, as well as I would, um, and others. And I also think people who maybe feel how they should address this um, may sometimes get in a bit of a rut of just saying it yeah, every yeah, Sunday yeah, yeah, or yeah, every day. Yeah. It's very easy to do that. I've tried to get into a position where I put little focuses on certain words when yeah, I'm reading yeah. this. And sometimes I think to myself, I'm doing it wrong. I, I, can you do it wrong? I don't know. <laughs> and that is the Lord's Prayer. Yeah, now, yeah. now, before I sort of understood the Lord's Prayer myself as best, and I'm still learning, I want to get out quite clear to everybody at home. But for the people who listen at home, you may go to a church and you feel like it's a bit buzzing and there's a bit, a bit of a vibe about it in some churches. And some churches, people are very intent. And you get to the Lord's Prayer and suddenly people you know, sort of you hear this guy, what's the what what are they saying? I think I picked up on heaven, you know. Um so my question is, how could you just break down the Lord's Prayer for us? How should we approach the Lord's Prayer? And what exactly is the Lord's right, Prayer, please? Right. Well, the Lord's Prayer is the prayer that Jesus was teaching the disciples. And and interestingly, in the Gospels, there are two versions of it. There's one in Matthew's Gospel, and there's another version in Luke's Gospel. Luke's version is a bit shorter. And I think it's highly likely that Jesus was constantly nudging his disciples to pray in a particular way, and that maybe each time he said it, it came out slightly differently. So it isn't a, a once-for-all time formula, but it has developed into that in the course of church history, those versions have been put together and we now have a standard form that is what precisely people often mumble uh, and so on. And we taught our kids to pray, etc. And I I realized much later that we taught them, they could say it phonetically, but they had no idea what it meant until um, they started to say things which made me realize, oh dear, we need to (laughs) get into this. But I stumbled upon um, a a few years ago a way in which I found helpful and I think other people have And that is to say, almost everybody, sooner or later in their lives, wants to pray. But often, the only prayer that many people want to pray is, help, I'm in a big mess, get me out of this. And there's a sense, please, if there's somebody somewhere out there. Well, interestingly, the Lord's Prayer ends. I mean, there's there's a tailpiece which gets put on, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. 
Um, I don't think that was in the earliest version. It gets gets in later in, in Matthew's Gospel. But the ending of the Lord's Prayer is, deliver us from evil, which is basically, help, I'm in a mess, I'm in the bog, what are you going to do, get me out of here? And I think that's where a lot of people come in. And in a sense, that's fine too. That's one clause of the Lord's Prayer, help, get me out of this, deliver me from this evil, either something's happening now or something I'm afraid is going to happen. When we've learned to pray that, we could move backwards in the prayer a little bit because we realize that actually the horrible truth is we are part of the mess. We have actually contributed to the mess. And when you ask for help, one of the things that God has to say to you is, yes, I will help, but you need to realize you're part of the mess too. Mm. And so the bit of the Lord's Prayer just before the end is, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In other words, don't think that the way out of the mess will be that you get to punch your enemies on the nose and then all will be well. There's something a bit more complicated going on here. And this is about growing up as a human being to realize those things. But when you've got to that point, when you realize maybe we actually need help, we need forgiveness, we need to become different sort of people if we're going to get God's help, then, and it's the middle of the prayer really, we go backwards to the phrase, give us today our bread for today. And there's different versions of that, give us the bread we need for tomorrow or our regular bread or something. But it's it's all about, hey, there are some basic needs in life. Please will you supply those? And bread stands for everything else that we might need. So the bread is kind of in the middle of the prayer with the forgiveness and the, the help bit coming on at the end. But as I say, we often, people approach them that way. When you've got to the point where you realize that God can and does give you everything you need, then there are all sorts of other things that you might say, well, what is God up to? Who is he? What's what's he doing? And that's the point at which, little by little, you might be led from those basic prayers back to a sense of God is actually at work in the world. And the Jesus who gave us this prayer was God with us at work in the world. And what was he doing? He was launching God's project to make the world the sort of place that God always intended. And the the biblical shorthand for that is kingdom, which is an odd word, and it throws people off the scent sometimes. But um, that the world should be like God always intended. So back from give us this day our daily bread is may your will be done on earth as in heaven. Mm. And God's purpose, as it says in the Bible again and again, is to bring earth and heaven together, not to snatch us away from earth and take us to heaven, but to bring heaven to earth, the life of heaven coming to, to roost in earth, as it were. So may your will be done on earth as in heaven, which is scary because do I always want that in my own life? And that's a good question. So behind that again is may your kingdom come, which means may you be the gentle, wise sovereign over the whole world. And when you get to that point, then you're ready to look God in the face. What are you going to call him? Well, the Bible teaches us to call God Father. Now, many of us have had fathers who we've loved dearly. Sadly, many of us have had fathers who've been brutal and mean and horrible, but um, that shouldn't put us off from calling God Father, because he is the ideal father. St. Paul says at one point, he's the father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. And so we put the prayer together, whichever way you come at it. And if you come in by the back door, all I can say is help. Well, work your way slowly up from there. Or if you've now got to the point where you have a sense that maybe you want to do business with God, well, as you read the stories of Jesus who called God Father, then learn to call God Father yourself by looking at Jesus and realizing he's got his arms out ready to embrace you and take you with him on that journey. And then the prayer grows and, as it were, changes as you learn to pray it until it's got all sorts of things going on in it, but always focused on God as Father, his will being done, his provision of our needs, his forgiveness, and his help when we need it. And it's when you get that whole package together that you're ready to say the ending. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So 
It's extraordinary. It's like a short piece of music which you can never get tired of hearing. That's how it should be. It's, it's absolutely stunning it's just, just hearing you phrase it like that. Something that comes to mind is the love thy neighbor. Ah. That really stood, stood out to me. Um, you know, f- forgive those who trespass. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And there is, there is, I feel like there's a strong sort of link to oh, yeah. loving, loving your neighbor. Well, it, because it so is. much can be done when you love your neighbor. Yep. So much can be done in the world. Uh, uh, of course. Of course. And when we look out at the trouble spots in the world, they come because people are demonizing their neighbors, either their political neighbors or their immediate neighbors or whatever. Um, and tragically, those lines, those fraction lines, go bet- in, within families, within societies, within cities, um, as well as globally. Um, and and yes, Jesus' message of forgiveness, it, it's so fascinating because that's the one bit in the prayer where we actually are told to say something about what we are doing as part of our response and the answer is if you want to be forgiven you've got to be a forgiving people mm. and that's tough people don't like it i i've had people say to me well tom you know, christianity looks all right but i don't think i could ever forgive people and the answer is i don't think any of us can until we have realized the joy of being forgiven and then it's a gift that you want to pass on and and when you and people think forgiveness is weakness that oh if you forgive them it means that it didn't really matter what they did but that's no, not forgiveness the, yeah. forgiveness is no it really did matter it did hurt it is reprehensible um, but I'm not going to let what you did cramp my life and make me a warped and bitter individual and I need to be released from that and so the way I release myself is by releasing you from that obligation but that's tough and it can take a lifetime to learn. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So I want to go back to when you said about um, fa- the word father. Mm, mm. Um, for me, I always address God as mm. father, father God or father. Mm. And I I love that. Yeah. I do. I suddenly feel in his presence. Yeah. Um, but I think for some people approaching it for the first time, it may feel a little bit strange. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, so what I wanted to sort of say to you and if see if you would agree or have a better way of saying it is that like any relationship, you have to kind of commit to relationship. You have to regularly do it and, and invite yeah. that person yeah. in. If you're making a new friend, you know, you you make an effort to yes. go and see. You yes. say day one, then day two, you go back and say, oh, hi, do you yes, remember yes. me? Yes, yes, yes. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've, I've had various friends who've <clears throat> discussed this with me, friends whose own relationship with their father has been very dysfunctional. Mm. And one friend of mine whose father... Um, left home when he was about six and he never saw him again and he tried to find out what had happened to him and the only time he found out was when when he found that the, that his father died and he went and sat on the gravestone and wept. Um, and, and so I, I've had those stories and I've realised that for, for that friend to call God Father is both something he desperately needs to do and something that's really difficult to do because of who his father was and the sense of betrayal and abandonment and so on. And so learning who God the true Father is um, can take a long time. And even those of us who loved our own earthly fathers and had good relationships with them, um, there's still lots to learn and to discover the the, the, the fatherhood of God. Um, and yes, of course, the Bible has many ways of, of addressing God, but Father, which isn't that common in the Old Testament, which comes in with a bang with the New Testament, um, and it's something to do with once Jesus is in the middle of the picture, then we begin to understand God. And the primary way is precisely as the Father, the Creator, the Progenitor, the one who is there for us and with us and around us and so on. Tom, I'm so incredibly grateful that you went through this with me. Um, when, Like I said to you in the car today, when, when we recorded um, New Testament for Everyone, right, right. Your, your translation, which is coming out in early 24, I believe. I think something like that. Something yes. like that. Oh, yeah. You know, there, there was things that I've read a, a thousand times and had read to me, and, and they just, new things popped out, and they really moved me. So thank you. Thank um, you. I would urge everybody to um, just just pop Tom Wright in, in, into Amazon. You'll find books. Um, yes. But also, you're, there's lots of talks on YouTube as well. You, you'll gain so much from it. Um but do do explore its relationship, and God loves you. It, it's as simple as that. It, it's not 
it's a no it's a no brainer but it does take relationship and don't be confused you know there is there is a door you're always welcome and reach out to us on on the youtube or the social media on the website um you know reach out to us and you know you're not a, you're not alone in feeling like this if you do feel like that um so do do get in touch there's plenty of resources for you but you know there's a door right in front of you or it might be above you on the floor why don't you step through it and uh see what happens it's, it's pretty great Tom Wright thank you so much I really appreciate it thank you very much very good to be with you thank you you've been listening to the Outskirts of Faith podcast we would love more people to join our community so please subscribe share this podcast and join us on our social media and of course you can visit our resource website at outskirtsoffaith.com this podcast was edited by Chris Byland the YouTube video editing by Adam Moss music by Matthew Salvage and hosted by Elliot Frisbee